In this video, I'm going to be very vulnerable, open, and honest. I go into my past, I go into controversies, and I also debunk very serious lies about me, including by involving the police, legal teams, and extensive research. It will get uncomfortable. I will get into details of my life that you probably don't want to hear and I don't particularly want to share either, but it feels necessary given the circumstances and honesty and truth is my top priority. As you guys have probably noticed, I took a long break from YouTube and since the face reveal, I've hardly really uploaded and I've really focused on other things and separated myself from a lot of the stuff I was doing before. You may think that this was due to the hate from the face reveal or for other reasons, but really there was something else that happened right after the face reveal and it really made me step back from what I was doing and have a lot less passion. If you've been on the internet recently, you've probably heard or seen some pretty crazy stuff about me. Whether it's the voice actor of Gumball attacking me, or accusations against me regarding grooming, you've probably heard a lot of pretty crazy stuff. I thought it's extremely important for me to make this video and provide as much information as I can, and I just want to right off the bat state as clearly as I can that these allegations are not true. I plan on going to extreme detail to prove that in this video, and to all the people that are spreading lies, fabricating stories, and making false accusations for fun, or because they think it's funny. The I don't care. I accept that I'm a horrible person. This is not not funny. This is not a joke. This is people's lives ranging from my own, my family, my employees, to actual victims that stories won't be heard or believed in the future because of this. I understand that some things in this video are much more important than others, so I split this video up into chapters, and you can skip to and watch the parts that are most important to you. I will say that everything in this video is very relevant. I think they're all vital topics to include because they help clear up my character. So yeah, the video has chapters, and if you want to skip around, there's a pinned comment. And again, I realize that nothing in this video is as important as me talking about serious allegations, so I've made it really easy to skip ahead to whatever is most important to you. Just because there's other stuff doesn't mean anything is less important. Monetization on this video is on, but every dollar will go to a charity that's linked in the description. Otherwise, I want to start with the biggest lie I have ever told. The face leak photo was me. Of course, it's from when I was really young and I've lost a lot of weight since then, and it wasn't at all representative of what I look like now, but it was me. Obviously, I said many times that it wasn't, and a lot of people have and still do use that against me to say that I'm dishonest, but the reason I lied about that is because of the face reveal. I'd been planning the face reveal for years, I sacrificed so much by staying inside and avoiding cameras for so long. I mean, I had covers on all my windows, and even to go to the dentist, I left hiding in the back of a car and went to a different state. Yes, I was paranoid. I wasn't going to let anyone take that moment away from me. Whatever I had to do to make sure that moment was suspenseful and exciting, I'm sure I would have done. And if anything, the face leak photo probably ended up creating more suspense and excitement to see if I was lying or if I actually looked like the leaked picture. Now, of course, there was a lot of personal information attached to the leaked picture, how it was found, where it was leaked from. So that definitely contributed to why I lied about it. I didn't lie because I was ugly or because I was overweight or anything like that. And every time I talked about the leaked picture, I always mentioned that I struggled with my weight in the past and that it's disheartening to see people make fun of the poor kid for that, which obviously I was the poor kid. And I think that's something I'm willing to admit now because I face revealed. I'm not risking that big moment anymore. And I also feel much more comfortable about my personal information and how I look and so on. The day the face leak was posted, I was playing a Minecraft tournament and someone called the SWAT team on me. Dream is AFK. I'm clear here. Um... I was put in handcuffs on my front lawn with cops with rifles pointing at me, and I was pretty much swatted from that day on almost daily, to the point where the reason Sapnap moved in with me before my face reveal was to answer the door when police showed up. Because people started camping outside with cameras to try and reveal my face, and I needed someone else to answer the door. When the people that were doxing me thought that they had the wrong address, my family ended up getting swatted, and my mom answered the door thinking that it was pizza for her and my little sister. They were held at gunpoint with police helicopters circling the neighborhood. People showed up at my house, people showed up at my family's house. The first time I ever got swatted, I I made sure not to mention it at all. Funnily enough, I actually got interviewed by a SWAT team member while I was muted and playing Minecraft parkour with the SWAT officer right next to me. But yeah, it's just all to show that even though I was very adamant about denying the face leak, it was much more about the fact that there was so much personal information attached to the picture, and I wanted as much separation from it as possible. It had nothing to do with how I look. I'm very proud of my weight loss story, and I was never ashamed about it at all. I think that it's very encouraging to see people accomplish weight loss. I did it all naturally, I lost hundreds of pounds, you have not seen me at my heaviest, and it's one of those things that I think is very encouraging to others. I love inspiring people, so it's it's a story I'm sure I'll tell in the future. But in that moment, it was not the right time to tell it. I feel like right now it's still kind of uncomfortable to talk about it, but it's annoying seeing the same damn picture. So here's some other pictures of me from before I lost weight, just so there's more variety. Now moving on to one of the most talked about controversies, the cheating scandal. I'm gonna be pretty concise with this one because it's been covered a million times and most of you are probably pretty sick of hearing about it, but it's still really important to talk about. It's one of the most frequent reasons people point to as to why not to trust me. I did unintentionally cheat on a speedrun that I officially submitted to the leaderboards in 2020 and the speedrun mods were completely in the right for taking it down. I was using a disallowed mod for about a week on my live streams when a new version of Minecraft came out and I was unaware that this mod existed. When I was defending myself, I didn't know that I'd been using the mod and it's a really complicated and lengthy explanation of how it's very reasonable that I didn't 
didn't know that I had the mod, so I can't go into that here. A lot of people say that it's impossible that I wouldn't have known that I was so lucky, but those people don't realize that it was a little bit of luck over a very long period of time, and not a lot of luck at once. It was actually only uncovered by a cheater themselves, who later got exposed for doing that same thing in the past. Yes, that's right, Mine Crevenger, the very same person that first publicly exposed Dream for cheating in his runs, has just been caught cheating himself. And not only cheating once, but cheating multiple world records over a span of more than two years. I was defending myself so confidently publicly because me and a developer had already considered and ruled out the possibility that I could have been using a mod. Carl Jops, a very well respected YouTuber that also investigates speedruns, made a video going into all the details. It's over an hour long. If you'd like to watch it to understand how that could happen and all the supporting evidence around it, you can. He is very critical of me in it, but here's his short conclusion that backs up what I'm saying from after his thorough investigation. In conjunction with all of the evidence I've seen, I believe the essence of what Dream was claiming in his paste bin was probably true. In my opinion, it is definitely more likely that he really didn't know his drop rates and barter rates were modified. Was it intentional? And I do believe that it probably wasn't. He did a lot of research and interviewed a lot of people to come to that conclusion. He interviewed the mod team, me, developers, and a lot more. He even said something afterwards that applies to a lot of the situations we're going to talk about today. So I'm going to go ahead and play that clip too. In one breath, people will complain that Dream is a liar. And then in the next, spout made up assumptions that couldn't be further from the truth. It seems like everyone is lying everywhere. I'm still fully responsible for my behavior back then towards the moderators, regardless of my intentions, and I did act like a little baby and caused the majority of the problems myself, so I'm sorry. Regardless of if you believe me or if you think that I'm being dishonest, since this all happened over three years ago, a lot has changed since, and I've done my best to move forward and grow as a person. I did my best to make amends with the mods, I apologized privately and publicly for lashing out at them, I donated over $50,000 to the speedrun community through tournaments and personal donations to over 15 different speedrunners, I voluntarily took down all my speedrun times, even ones that had nothing at all to do with the mod or the cheating scandal. I also deleted my original response video, and I haven't speedrun officially since. It's been over three years. Now that that's out of the way, I want to clear up some quick misinformation around it. One, it had nothing to do with my manhunt videos or any video or speedrun I have ever posted on my YouTube channel. It was specifically live streamed attempts that I did during a one week or so period over three years ago. It's a common misconception that the cheating had to do with my YouTube channel, manhunt, or any other videos I've posted. Two, I didn't hire a fake astrophysicist to defend me, which is also commonly said. Knowing nothing about math, but fully believing in my innocence at the time, given the accusation was purely based on math, I used a website for math freelancers and reached out directly to a highly qualified professor that said they'd willing to help me. They even made one of their conditions before agreeing that no matter what their conclusion was, I had to publish their results, even if their conclusion was that I was guilty. I agreed to this. Dream briefly explained the situation, and the expert agreed to help. The expert provided Dream with a few terms, one of them being that Dream post the results no matter the outcome. Obviously their report ended up getting ripped to shreds, but I had no idea that would be the case. I knew absolutely nothing about math, and I fully believed in my innocence, so when a highly qualified third party was agreeing with me, it made me even more confident and bold. There was many factors as to why the report ended up being bad, partially due to the public pressure and it being rushed, partially due to them not knowing as much about Minecraft as the mod team did, but regardless, I didn't bribe or make up a fake astrophysicist, which is something people frequently say. The speedrun mod team and many other parties independently verified their credentials and the fact that they exist. I also put way more information in the description on this, just for transparency's sake, including proof about the professor, all of my emails to them, and even screenshots of messages that I never provided in the past. I think that's really important to clear up because it's used very, very frequently to say, if you will go as far as to make up a fake astrophysicist to lie, how far will he go with other lies? And I would just like to point out that even though I didn't lie, lying about a Minecraft speedrun is very different than lying about very serious allegations. The next thing I'm going to talk about is a pretty big one that you might not have heard about, but it's a pretty important one. Manatreed. Now, if you don't know who Manatreed is, Manatreed is a content creator that I added to my server, the Dream SMP, a couple years ago. They were anonymous like me, and they had a very short career. There was a thread made about Manatreed saying that they doxxed him and that he was an IRL friend of mine, had been charged with domestic violence, and that I was trying to hide it. Manatreed was removed from the SMP by me, all of his accounts were deleted, and I made a statement talking about how I don't support domestic violence, I wasn't aware of any domestic violence, and that due to how complicated the situation was, I decided to remove Manatreed from the SMP. I also strongly alluded to the fact that the doxxed information was incorrect. Everything I just said was true true, except for the fact that Manatreed was my childhood best friend. I came up with the name Manatreed, I made the accounts, I grew up with him, his grandparents were like my grandparents, he was like family to me. The criticism I get to this day related to this is that I intentionally housed and hid an abuser. Because Manatreed was faceless and anonymous like me, people said that it was planned deliberately in order to hide a domestic violence charge. This is not true. In late 2020, he had a lot of problems. He was struggling with homelessness, had been in multiple recent car accidents. I knew I could help him, so I did. I offered him a place to stay. I paid for his groceries and gas for a while, and eventually, I came up with the idea to add him to my server. He was my childhood friend. 
I trusted him, and he wasn't a risk. I was anonymous, so obviously if I wanted to play games with him, his identity couldn't be known, or it would leak my identity. Whenever the thread first came out saying that Manatreet abused his girlfriend, I responded emotionally, calling people gullible, because I didn't believe that someone I had known for so long and grew up with could do anything like that. And at the time, although no one knew, he lived with me in Sapnet, so it seemed crazy that he could somehow hide it from us. I jumped to the gun and reacted emotionally. Only later did I properly look into everything, and I apologize. After I confronted Manatreet in real life, he claimed that he wasn't an abuser, that he had just had an altercation with another guy, and that his ex-girlfriend got in the middle of it. He claimed that he never hit her, that he had just caught her cheating and was fighting the guy that she was cheating with, that the cops got called, and that he got arrested. This is just what he said. This altercation would have taken place around a year before he moved in with us, and I had no knowledge of it. People thought that domestic violence took place when he lived with us, because my address was on a court document of his, but that was far after when he was on probation and had to tell the court where he currently lived. He also lied to us and told us that he was on probation for smoking weed, in order to not have us question anything suspicious related to it. Even though he claimed to me that he wasn't abusive to anyone, I couldn't just take him for his word, and so I did research myself. I reached out to his ex-girlfriend and talked to her about it all. She wouldn't really say that much. She said to give Manatreed the best wishes for his future, and that his mistakes were behind her, and that she just wanted to be left alone online. I didn't want to push her for information, so because of that, I didn't feel comfortable having Manatreed on the Dream SMP anymore. I didn't have full confidence that he was being honest with me because he had already lied to me. And I was also still faceless and really didn't want to have to dox myself to explain the situation. I decided the best idea would just be to remove him from the server. I had created all of the accounts, so I completely shut them down and removed his access. That meant that there was absolutely no risk that, even if he was lying, he would ever cause future harm because of me. Unfortunately, this wasn't a cut and dry situation. This was one of my childhood best friends that had always treated me with kindness and had lied to me. And unfortunately, due to all of this, I have no contact with him and lost someone that was like family to me. I'll never know the exact truth behind everything. The person that I knew was kind, generous, and compassionate, and I never would have added him to the server if I thought he was anything otherwise. But what I do know is that, other than my initial crude response, I stand by my actions. I think that I navigated a really complex situation the best that I could. I got rid of any risk, supported a victim, made it clear that I didn't support domestic violence, even to the detriment of one of my oldest friendships. I completely understand people that don't know my side of this situation, assuming that this makes me a liar, and that it's obvious that I was covering up wrongdoing. I even had creators that thought this until they talked to me about it. It's not unreasonable at all, and that's why I figured I had to talk about it in this video, even if it is personal and uncomfortable. Before I jump into the most important things I'm going to address, I want to talk about something that's come up a lot due to these allegations, and something that's commonly said to give credibility to me being a bad or weird person. I'm going to play a clip from Moist Critical, who talked about the allegations pretty neutrally to his credit. But while talking about them, he said this. Dream's audience has always been on the younger side of things, and yet Dream constantly engages with them in very inappropriate ways, such as like posting thirst traps. He does post thirst traps, even knowing that his fans are children. So when these claims come out, I think a lot of people start to take them at face value because they're like, oh, that, that sounds like the dream that I know. Uh, you know, this sounds like something dream might do, so it's probably true. Even though right now a lot of the evidence backing it up isn't the strongest. Now, before I talk about this, I just want to ask that if you're watching this and you share the same opinion, try and give me the benefit of doubt. Genuinely listen to what I have to say and discard your preconceived biases. Because yeah, if you think someone's creepy and then they're accused of being a creep, it clearly changes how you think. So I'm going to break down multiple things that Charlie said, because I respect him. I respect his opinion. I think he's a super reasonable guy, and I think he's an awesome content creator. One of the things that he said is that I post creepy pictures and thirst traps. He does post thirst traps. So that's the first thing I'm going to talk about. Uniquely, because I didn't reveal my face until last year, I can actually pretty reasonably show you every photo and video of myself that I've ever posted on the internet. So they're going to start scrolling by now in a completely random order. While you watch, it's important to note that what you post on something like Snapchat is very different than something you'd post on Instagram or Twitter. Snapchat runs ads every five or six photos and encourages you to post upwards of 100 photos or videos a day to have the most growth and make the most money. They only last 24 hours like an Instagram story. So on Snapchat, you kind of just spam anything. So for me, it's silly filters, my cat, Whatever food I'm eating that day, I get a haircut. Because of that, it's much easier to take one silly photo from Snapchat out of context and make it out to be something that it's not. On top of that, there's a lot of fake accounts that I think people fall for all the time. They post thirst trap captions using my photos, and with how many likes they get, there's a lot of people that casually scroll Twitter and think their posts are mine. There's one specific one that was extremely popular and verified before it was suspended. It posted tweets like this, and this, and this. These are just completely normal photos I posted of myself with no caption, but they repost them and put a weird caption. This has fooled tons of people, including people that have made pretty big videos about me, and I wouldn't be surprised at all if Charlie saw this account a couple times and thought its tweets were mine. A lot of people also say stuff like this. I don't know why he still uses Snapchat, it's still kind of weird, I told you. If you're a grown man using Snapchat, 
which I think is super reasonable to think. If you don't know that there's creator accounts now that work very differently to normal Snapchat accounts, you can promote stuff to millions of people through Snapchat's algorithm. And even as of recently, you can make a lot of money, obviously encouraging you to post whatever random stupid photo you took. I mean, I hardly even log into my Snapchat myself and even have someone else completely run the account because there's a manager account feature where I can just post from my personal Snap and never even see any of the messages. I also sometimes have people say that I'm weird because of fan art account likes from my fan art account. So I just want to clarify, I'm not the one behind 99% of the likes. I've never made that public because it is beneficial for artists for people to think that it's me every time. But again, when it's being used against me to say I'm creepy, I have to clarify. Hi, so I've ran Dream's public Snapchat since January 2022. There's nothing weird and he doesn't really even log into it. Um, I also run his fan art account and have been since January 2022 as well. I'm good friends with Dream and the Dream team, so he thought I'd be a good pick to run it. I mostly just like and retweet art. I'm banished from replying. Sometimes people will call him creepy for stupid stuff that I've liked and I've never really taken it seriously because I just think what's being depicted in the art is funny to me, like DNF kissing art or something because I'm their friend and it makes me laugh. It just happens to be really good art. But when it's being used to say that dream is creepy or weird, I feel really bad because he's definitely not. There's been times that he's messaged me and told me to unlike something or asked why I was on a DNF liking spree. And he's definitely a silly guy, but people shouldn't use me liking art that I found funny or just thought was impressive or artistically against him. I can still be more careful about what's liked on the account though, and I also can re-clarify my boundaries, which I do at the end of this video. But I will just say here that I've never supported not safe for work art of minors or from minors. I think that that's weird and gross, and I clarify my boundaries on myself later in the video, but generally it's just I don't want anything weird drawn of me. I also later have the person who used to run the account back in 2020 say something as well, but yeah. Like one out of every 1,000 Snapchats I post, people end up spreading and making fun of, which is fine of course, but it's when it's made out to be weird that it's disingenuous. Now that's not to say that I'm posting the exact same thing as everyone else, or that what I'm posting isn't different than other people. It definitely is. I was faceless for a very long time, never took pictures of myself, and had no social media before YouTube. So you're seeing literally my first time ever taking pictures, and I am just a little goofy. Again, it's fine to make fun of, like some of these pictures are stupid, but using them as evidence that I'm weird or making them out to be weird just isn't fair. I don't really take myself seriously. I don't think I'm super attractive. I don't think I'm super funny. I think a lot of people misunderstand some of the things that I post that are satire. A lot of my videos before I did Minecraft challenges were satire videos, and I still post a lot of satire. A perfect example of this is my unface reveal. I posted a video on my channel where I unrevealed my face. It's a satire video. I have my two best friends burst down my door, tell me that I'm ugly and to put my mask back on, which I agree with, make a professional mask mask, and then go through the McDonald's drive through with it on, while saying that I'm never taking it off ever again. The number of people that took this seriously was in the tens of millions. People see the headline, assume that sounds like something that cringe guy would do, and then it's history. And the same thing happens with my TikToks. Like, almost my entire TikTok page is sarcastic, but every now and then, someone will take a TikTok of mine completely seriously. Like, I posted a video of me with a chat filter on and said no filter, right after the face reveal. I made a TikTok where I take off the mask and use an ugly filter. Another TikTok where I make fun of the face leak photo or many other sarcastic posts. But then I post a TikTok where I'm in a Walmart wearing my mask and people take it so seriously. I get tons of hate and it said how cringe it is that I would go shopping in my mask, that it's pathetic that I'm trying to hide my face after I already revealed it. Or I post a TikTok where I sing one of my songs, say no auto-tune, and then kiss the camera. And it's that I'm trying to be hot or think I'm such an amazing singer instead of that I'm self-aware and playing into the cringe. I didn't watch that and go, ah, you are so cool. You are such an amazing singer and you're also hot. Like, it's not serious. Yes, I do post cringy stuff sometimes, and I'm not trying to say that I've never been cringy, or that you can't make fun of content that is intentionally cringy, but I've never posted anything that you could remotely say is a thirst trap, or inappropriate for my audience. Because as you can see, in the context of all these other photos I've posted, it's not honest to single out one weird Snapchat out of context of the thousands I spam, and then say that I post creepy photos. But yeah, like, one photo I posted was heavily spread as a thirst trap by parody accounts, and it's this. I'm supposed to be dead. It's definitely not a thirst trap, but it's not like I was sending it to somebody and being weird. I was just spamming photos on my public story. Oh no, George not found is giving him the slopperson. Oh no, oh no. Like, yeah, it's goofy. It was not a thirst trap. I posted one or two photos with my shirt off ever. And this one's because I thought it was cool to see my hair comb back since it's always forward. And you can't even see me or my body. There's also this monstrosity that's frequently shared. Like, this is a gross photo. I look terrible. This is not a thirst trap. This is a terrible photo. This is just disgusting. I was just spamming photos, didn't think much of it, and posted it. And now it will haunt me until the end of time. I'm cringy and being serious when I make satire posts. I'm full of myself when 
I post a normal photo. I'm gross when I post a bad photo. I'm weird when I post a silly photo. It's just people assuming the worst or just not knowing who I am, which I guess is fair. So yeah, that's what I have to say about the thirst traps thing. But obviously that's just photos. Now in terms of other stuff, I've definitely had my opinions morph over time, especially since I've face revealed and actually got to meet fans in person. But we can still talk about some old stuff that people frequently use to say that I'm weird. First of all, me calling my fan base kittens. Now this was a stupid tweet. If I could go back, never would have tweeted it. I completely understand that without knowing my intentions or what I actually meant, it could seem super weird. The whole Discord kittens meme wasn't as big yet, and I just tweet so much, I just wasn't really thinking. It came out horribly and I will never live this down. It is still something that my friends make fun of me for to this day. I was just trying to explain that when I say I love my audience, I don't mean in the same way that I love my friends or my family, that I mean it in the way that I love dogs, even though I don't know every dog personally. I can still He'll say I love dogs. I should not have said kittens, but it's not what I meant. It was a stupid tweet. I've tweeted tens of thousands of times the last few years. It wasn't my brightest moment, but it also wasn't me trying to be weird or going kittens. It was just an analogy that I regret using. Another point of evidence towards the dream is weird narrative was me quote unquote selling my baby pictures. In 2022, my merch company sold a flash drive that was dream themed. It was gonna be sold empty. And then my mom and my dad, who helped run my merch company, had the idea to put some random stuff onto the drive. So it felt more unique. I thought it was a cool idea. The content on the drive wasn't what was being sold. It was the slap wristband flash drive itself. We added some drafts of books I wrote from when I was a teenager, some memes, some old Minecraft screenshots of me and my friends, some notes and emails from teachers talking about me being rebellious in middle school. <laughs> and yes, two pictures of me from when I was a baby. The intent was wasn't at all to sell pictures of me when I was a baby, which other celebrities have actually literally done. The intent was just to show a little bit of where I'm from, like you would show pictures in a biography you would sell or something. It was my version of a little biography with writing and pictures and quotes. I think there's definitely something to be said about the concept of being in possession of a file of someone else's baby picture versus it just being in a physical book. So I totally get it. But you have to recognize that that's clearly not the intention. It should be something funny or cringe to make fun of and not be a serious thing like being about pedophilia. But yeah, I mean, as you can probably tell by the pictures going by, I have a pretty normal life. I think I'm a pretty average guy, and 99% of the things I post online are extremely normal. Despite how much I've put myself out there, there's only a few weird out of context things to show for it, and a couple goofy photos. So yeah, I think when people say that I post thirst traps or post predatory things to my audience, they're just misinformed. I don't think that Charlie is being malicious at all. It's just a lot of misinformation, and it's something I've never really made an effort to clear up. I always lean into the cringe, but when it's being used to strengthen serious allegations, that's when I kind of have to really break down how I am. But yeah, I mean, on top of all that, my audience is not as young as people think. This isn't a hill I'm gonna die on, because I know a lot of people have their minds made up or could not be convinced. Believe it or not, I have one of the oldest audiences in all of Minecraft YouTube. I started YouTube through coding and extremely complex stuff, like reverse engineering PewDiePie's Minecraft seed. My videos, even to this day, are super long, don't have that quick retention style editing or sound effects or anything that a lot of channels do, and I also have a large pro gamer audience, because my videos involve a lot of technical skill. My audience outside of YouTube is younger, but the vast majority of people I get recognized by on the street are college aged and usually dudes being like what the f it's dream on twitch i've covered heavy topics in this video i'm covering heavy topics me and my friends all swear on every other platform and we're definitely not kids channels in any way just because i post minecraft videos doesn't mean that my audience is just little kids most people that watch me either used to play minecraft or don't even play minecraft at all I think Charlie's audience is of course much older than mine, but if I posted photos like these, which to be clear, if I was ripped as hell like Charlie, I would 100%, it would be made out to be predatory because it's me when it's not at all. And that same standard isn't applied to TikTok stars or really anyone else but me, just because I'm the Minecraft guy. A lot of the photos me and Charlie have posted are actually really similar. It's just people cherry picking goofy photos of mine and then making them out to be weird. When it's just me posting random photos, because that's literally part of our job. But yeah, I guess that's all I have to say about that. Now to move on and talk about some really important stuff. Over the last year and a half, there's been a bunch of really serious allegations made against me. Some of them were quickly disproved, others admitted they were lying, but there's still some that I'm gonna address in this video. The first allegation made against me was pretty quickly discarded. It was an allegation of flirting and had some inconsistencies. I'm still taking it seriously though and don't wanna overlook anything, so I'm gonna talk about it now. The first ever allegations against me that were spread pretty far were made the day after my face reveal on October 3rd, 2022. A girl named Anastasia tweeted out, he's only face revealing because he's scared that I'll do it first. And then she followed it up by tweeting, I'm too tired slash real life struggling to get involved, but the 
YouTuber trending right now already face revealed to me years ago when he was flirting with me when I was a minor. Obviously, because of my face reveal, it took off, pointing out inconsistencies, asking questions, and so on. I didn't have any inappropriate contact with this person. I didn't have any sexual contact with this person. I hardly even remember who this person is at all. And the only messages I could even find with this person were friendly Twitter DMs. And even in those Twitter DMs, I mentioned that they had 18 in their bio, which they contradict. I definitely didn't face reveal to them. That's an obvious lie. Almost nobody knew what I looked like at all before my face reveal. Not even most of my best friends that had known me my entire life, let alone someone I don't even remember talking to at all. She posted a screenshot of some texts and claimed that they were from me. She showed a screenshot of my TikTok being from your contacts to try and prove that the texts were from me, which people quickly pointed out isn't possible because I have a Google voice number hooked up to my TikTok, which isn't iMessage like the texts. And again, she never claimed any sexual misconduct. She never claimed anything related to nudity or sexting. This was also in early 2020 and she had 18 in her bio with everything and all the inconsistencies. It wasn't taken that seriously, but it's still worth noting because people still somehow say this is one of three victims of mine. So yeah, before talking about the next allegation, I just want to address something that I think is pretty important. I see some people say, why respond to fans at all? Or that it doesn't matter what Dream said. The fact that he responded to a fan is creepy. And people saying that are missing a little bit of nuance. First of all, back when I started YouTube in 2019, obviously I had a very small community, even moving into mid 2020 before the Dream SP. It's very common that when you have a smaller community, you're trying to grow your community. And part of how you do that is by interacting with people and responding and being active. I've always been pretty active in my community. And when I was really small, I used to respond to just about literally everyone that DM'd me, even if it was just one word answers. Obviously later on and as I grew, I replied less and less and things evolved over time with my fan base growth. Like as an example, when I started my public Snapchat in 2019, I ran the account, but in early 2020, because I was growing, I completely passed the reins off to someone else and pretty much never logged into it ever again. Hi, I would like to remain anonymous. So I'm just gonna be calling myself Rebecca. Uh, I used to run Dream Snapchat starting in 2020. I did that for probably around a year and I would like read through all the messages and I'd screenshot art or funny comments and I would respond when it was appropriate. Uh, there is definitely nothing weird going on in this account. Dream hardly even logged into it and it was mainly me. He never used it inappropriately and although I no longer work for Dream, I am not aware of him ever acting inappropriate with fans or anyone underage. Most, if not all of the Snapchats I've posted since then have been through the manager account feature, meaning I use my normal Snapchat and post to my other account like a story without even ever logging in or seeing any messages. I think that when people talk about messaging or becoming friends with a fan, most people are thinking of a stan or a super obsessive fan because what makes you a fan? Having watched one video, two videos, 10, being subscribed, there's levels to it. My point being that when you're talking about messaging someone and it being weird, there has to be a weird dynamic. Obviously a streamer that's subscribed to me and has watched my videos in the past and DMs me, should not be looked at the same as a random person that does the exact same thing. I've had fans of mine turn into friends of mine, but I don't go seeking out friendships with people who have obsessions with me. There's a difference between a fan of mine who reacts to my videos because they're entertaining and makes some content about me because that's what gets views that I end up becoming friends with, than a random stan that posts thirst edits of me. Obviously a massive difference. There's a difference between a random stan in your Twitch chat that watches every stream because they love you and a regular viewer that's in your community because they have common interests with you that you end up becoming friends with. And at that point, they're no longer a fan, they're a friend. And it's cases becoming some of the most beloved couples on the internet. My point is that there's a lot of nuance. I think it's a responsibility of a creator to be able to recognize dynamics, avoid any weird ones. You can't just look at the fact that somebody follows you or has watched a couple of your videos and write them off as, oh, they're a fan. Therefore, we can have no conversation. I was also fans of a lot of my friends before I became friends with them. A lot of people that I ended up hiring as editors or artists or really anything are fans. And then of course you can become friends. Again, the whole point is that there's a lot of specifics to it. You can't just write somebody off completely. But again, that's fans, that's not stands. Otherwise, moving back to the next very important thing. Now, the second allegation is what I'm going to talk about in extreme detail. Second allegation came out soon after the first and said that the first allegation was why they were sharing their story. It was from a girl that claimed that when she was 17, we inappropriately messaged. This did not happen. Let's get into the details. On September 23rd, 2020, Amanda messaged me from her personal Instagram account, sending a message that was clearly a fan message. She thanked me for saving her life, and I replied to this message. In September of 2020, I was a lot smaller than I am now, so I got a lot less DMs, and I was much more active in like the fan communities and replying to people. And all, all I replied was, oh, thank you for the kind words. And then I also replied, glad to make you smile after she followed up with the message. I put a transcript of every Instagram message that I've ever sent her linked in the description. It might not be every message that she sent me, because there's proof that she 
she deleted Instagram messages to me. An old TikTok of hers has messages from me that wasn't in her post with the accusations when she showed our messages, but my transcript tried to include those and piece it together. Um, but again, it, it might not be all of them because I don't know what she deleted. I only know what she deleted from the thing she accidentally showed in her old TikTok of the deleted messages. Amanda, on the other hand, how are you doing, Dream? September 25th, the next day I replied, I'm good, thank you, how are you? Amanda, the same day replied, I'm doing okay, could be better, could be worse, thank you for asking. Amanda replied, how's your kitty doing? I love cats. I replied and said she's doing amazing. September 28th, so three days later, Amanda said, Dream, I need some advice. I'm trying to become a small streamer on Twitch, but not a single person joins my streams. How do I get an audience? October 2nd, so a few days later, I replied and said, try and play with your friends maybe? Post clips to Reddit and stuff. And then she replied and said, okay, thank you, with a heart. The next day she messaged me again and said, Dream, would you ever consider playing Among Us with me? XD. I guess this was, this was during the Among Us craze. We're still in 2020. October 5th, 2020, I replied, maybe, heart. Amanda said, LOL, I'll take the maybe. That would be sick. I didn't reply. So this is a month and a little bit later. Amanda said, hi, Dream. And then she sent another message that was deleted after she made the allegations. We don't know what it was. We only know the last couple characters. And again, we only know it exists because she messed up and included it in an old TikTok of hers. And then I replied in, you know, later and said, hi. Amanda said, how are you? November 16th. So that's another few days later. I replied and said, good, good. How about you? She replied and said, I'm pretty good. Thank you. November 30th. So, you know, another two weeks later, Amanda said, hi, Dream. I want to actually become a streamer like you and your friends. I'm just so uneducated on what supplies I need. Can you recommend me all the products I need to successfully stream? Like computer, cam, mic, headset, etc. You have no idea how I would appreciate it. December 5th, 2020. So like a week later, I replied and said, almost everything I have was recommended by Bad Boy Halo. Haha. <laughs> Amanda replied and she sent another message that she deleted after she made the allegations. That again, we won't know what it was. December 26th, so almost a month later, Amanda sent a video. We don't know what the video was. I don't think it was opened, but I, I don't know though. I didn't reply. January 5th, Amanda said again, Hi Dream, I just want to say happy late new year and merry Christmas. Congratulations on everything you've accomplished this year. I hope I am fortunate enough one day to be as successful as you. If you could tell me what kind of computer you have, that'd be great. January 16th, so 11 days later, I replied, thank you. Amanda replied, deleted message, and then part of it was how are you? But obviously I didn't reply. April 13th, so a while, like a long time later, Amanda messaged me again and said hi i replied hi amanda said how are you i said decent how are you she said i'm all right thank you then she said i heard some snippets of the song you're working on and i really like it you have a really nice singing voice i replied on april 14th thank you so that was uh the next day um she said you're welcome and then december 26th so that, that was like a long time later she messaged me and said merry late christmas heart i didn't reply um january 10th she messaged me and said Hi, my Snapchat was banned and I have no friends. How are you? I replied two days later and said, how TF does a Snapchat get banned? Amanda replied and said, I'm pretty sure it's because I posted videos of me smoking, but all my memories from 2014 are gone. So sad. I replied the next day and said, damn. And then she replied that same day and said, yeah, it sucks. How are your holidays? I replied the next day and said, good, good. How about you? And then uh, Amanda replied that same day and said, pretty good. You may be wondering at this point, why are you replying to her? You seem clearly disinterested. You're taking days or weeks to reply. And then when you do reply, it's very dry. Well, Instagram has a really stupid feature that makes it so that once you've replied to someone's DMs once, you can't remove their ability to personally message you unless you block them. You cannot be following them. You can delete them from your inbox. They can still message you and pop up in your notifications. I'm showing an example on screen of my DM continuing to pop up on my alt account just to show how it works. Obviously, given I replied to Amanda back in 2020 when I had a much smaller community, she was stuck in my inbox for the rest of time. You can temporarily delete someone from your inbox and it deletes all of your message history to them for you, but they can still message you with now a blank DM history. So at one point, wanting her to stop DMing me, I swiped her out of my inbox multiple times. It's actually completely provable that I did do this. I'm showing a video of my Instagram DMs to Amanda now where they start in December of 2021, much later than her original DMs. Because you can't delete other people's individual messages and you can only delete entire conversations, this proves 100% that I was trying to delete her ability to message me in 2021. It also shows a problem. The only messages that I can see from Amanda were from December 2021 onward. I had no context or recollection of her original messages to me that made it clear that she was a really big fan. I don't remember everyone that messages me, who they are, where I know them from, so on. She messaged me from her personal Instagram, had no connections to any fan accounts, didn't send me any more fan messages, and she had DM'd me many times talking about content creation and streaming, some of which she deleted. She seemed very normal, friendly, and implied strongly that she was overage. What I thought about her age doesn't matter that much because nothing inappropriate happened, but it does matter to show my mindset because I don't go around befriending underage girls or people that are obsessed with me or my content. To the best of my knowledge, she was neither. Continuing with the transcript, now we get to the very end, which was our first real conversation. This one was about music. 
music, which makes sense. It's something I'm really passionate about. At the time, I was working on a song called Trust Issues and some other random music projects. And in the middle of us talking about music, I gave her my Snapchat. I said, add me on Snapchat. And she said, sure thing, just added you. I was sharing music snippets with a bunch of people at the time. And as we were talking about music, I wanted to share them with her. And I'm obviously not going to send snippets of a new song over Instagram. Now, I've pretty much always used Snapchat as one of my main forms of communication. It was actually the first social media I ever got because a friend of mine wanted to start a streak with me. And it's something I started using a lot more when I became faceless on YouTube. Because yeah, stuff is deleted. You don't have to stress over people analyzing or leaking everything you say. And for me, even for something as simple as a picture of my cat, people used to zoom into my cat's eyes to look at the reflection to try and dox me. This was not uncommon at all. So of course I felt much more comfortable using Snapchat during this period, especially with people that I wasn't great friends with, but even with my best friends. Now let's go over her actual claims in detail. Amanda claims that after I added her on Snapchat on January 17th, 2022, that we started sexting. She showed that her birthday when she would turn 18 is on February 17th, exactly a month later. She claims that we sexted from around the 17th of January, the day I added her on Snapchat, to the 10th of February, and then that it stopped. She said that while she was still underage, we exchanged nudes. Her evidence of this was two photos of, supposedly me, from after she was 18, complimenting her. Her final important claim was that she traveled to Orlando in August and that we planned to meet up and have sex. And I just want to make sure that I blatantly deny this before continuing. None of this is true. And now I'm going into more detail. Now, unfortunately, because she didn't provide any proof of these things, it's difficult to be specific about some of the things she claimed. It's much easier to completely make up that something happened than it is to prove that it never did. Like if I said right now, prove to me 100% that you never sexted a specific person that you've had on Snapchat at any point, it would be impossible to do. But what I can do is lay out all the inconsistencies, talk about the proven lies, the specifics, point out questions that were never asked, and provide all of the evidence that I have. And I believe that luckily, that's way more than enough. So first, I want to talk about the timeline. Every contact we've ever had with each other before January 17th is the Instagram DMs, which I just read to you, which are now all public in their entirety in the description of this video, other than the messages that she deleted. She claims that sexting started around January 17th and that sexting stopped February 10th. So from the 17th, to maybe February 10th is the time frame where we were sexting. So even if we say that it started a couple weeks before it stopped, you'd have to believe that every message you've just seen, we went from that to sexting days later in 2022 before my face reveal. Even if you want to give her the maximum benefit of doubt and say that she confused the timeline, she turned 18 on the 17th, one week after she claimed the sexting stopped. So there's not much leeway. Secondly, we can talk about her Twitter. She tweeted out defending me from hate on my face reveal 10 days before the allegations and was liking my tweets, including a subscriber milestone tweet two days before she tweeted her allegations. With the timing of the face reveal and her allegation, my belief is that there was a lot of hate and that it's easy to get spiteful and join in on a hate train. I had ignored multiple of her Instagram DMs and Snapchat messages in recent months, and I had also made a new Snapchat that I didn't add her on. I still used my old Snapchat occasionally, but I just rarely responded. That's my only real explanation for why she flipped so quickly from being publicly positive to me to lying about me, but I guess I'll never really know. Thirdly, the only photos she showed as proof that I groomed her were both pictures from based on her own evidence after she was 18, meaning even if we give her the benefit of doubt and assume everything she's provided is real and truthful, she was 18 when these messages would have been sent, and I had no context to the fact that she was more than a small streamer. But on top of that, I unblocked her Snapchat, went through our Snapchat chats, and couldn't find either of the messages that she was talking about. I also downloaded all of our Snapchat logs using the Snapchat data tool, which she can do as well, and neither of the compliments that she showed were in the logs. Now, honestly, this is pretty useless information because there's almost no messages in the logs at all, but it's still extremely weird that she was asked for these logs many times. It takes five minutes to download and she never did it probably because it doesn't support what she was saying on top of those things from everything she had told me she was 19 and we had no inappropriate contact the context of these messages would be a 22 year old creator calling a 19 year old streamer gorgeous on a birthday post while giving her a gift card as a birthday present Finally, she said that we planned to meet up and have sex in August when she was in Orlando. It was suggested that we meet up and have sex. I was either going to have him come to my the resort I was at or he was going to pick me up and bring him to his house. First of all, this was before my face reveal. I did not leave my house. I was massively paranoid. I was not meeting up with a random person I had just met two months before my face reveal, let alone at a resort, which is what her claim was. I'm gonna go ahead and play a phone call with my mom just to give you some perspective from before my face reveal. How many times do you think that I left the house between 2021 and my face reveal? Wow, I don't know, three? Maybe four. What did I leave the house for whenever I left the house? Um, well, I know you went to the dentist three times, and then I think one other time was when you had the um, kidney stones. <laughs> so oh, yeah, you're the hospital. ER. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Those were the only times you left the house, and we were worried because we didn't want you to call 911 because we didn't even know if they would come because of all the fake um, swattings and everything, so I had to come get you and take you That's to the hospital. True. So it was probably five times that you left. 
Okay, what was the process when we did leave the house? What was the process like? Crazy. I pulled into the garage, shut the garage door. You would get in the back seat, way back of the van, with a blanket over yourself, and you wouldn't come out from under the blanket until we were on the highway. I was a little paranoid. <laughs> a little bit. What was the inside of the house like? What, what precautions did we take? Oh my gosh, it was like a cave. Um, every window was covered, even the high windows that were arches. We had to like tape curtains over them so that even a drone wouldn't be able to see in. Everything was covered. Yeah, so we had the, the banker come to the house because you wouldn't go out of the house, but we needed to set up bank accounts. Whatever it was that needed to happen, we were the ones that did it so that you didn't have to go out. Okay, thank you, Mom. You're welcome. I love you. Love you, too. Bye. Again, as you can probably tell, what she claims definitely didn't happen. Either she's telling the truth, and her story makes sense, or she's not, and it doesn't. Now, some other stuff to note. After her allegations, she deleted a lot of evidence. She unliked a lot of tweets she had liked. She deleted replies of hers on Twitter and TikTok that hurt her credibility or contradicted what she was saying. She deleted Instagram DMs to me and only got caught because she accidentally showed them in an old TikTok of hers, and that's all completely factual and documented. Later, she was bragging on TikTok, calling people doubting her jealous, saying, I'm gorgeous and my favorite YouTuber thought so too. It's giving jealous. Not treating the serious situation that she claimed happened seriously at all. People also found old tweets of hers where she was replying very inappropriately to other streamer friends of mine. She was even banned in one of my friend's chats for saying she wanted to sit on his face. These accounts weren't linked to her Instagram, so I would have had no idea about them. She also replied to fans of mine questioning her with slurs. She also said that she was gonna lie and tell me that she was 18, but that she changed her mind, I guess. So I was going to lie and tell him I was 18. She said she would provide proof of the fact that she told me she was 17 and that I still sexed her tomorrow. But I didn't, and that proof will come out tomorrow. And guess what? She never posted proof because this never happened. She tweeted out thanking people for all the support and claimed at the end that I deleted our DMs right as she tweeted this and specifically said my end too, which means her DMs too. Well, I just want to point out that this is impossible. There's not a single mainstream social media platform that lets you delete both people's messages. And we only had each other on Instagram and Snapchat where you can't do that on either. She claimed that she was laughing and was going to prove people wrong with pictures of my penis, to which again, Never happened. Lastly, she tweeted saying that she's getting the law involved and going to the police. Said she's going to put me in jail unless I confess. She said she would provide more evidence. She didn't. She said she would upload her Snapchat logs. She didn't. She said she would sue me. She didn't. And now I'm making this video. She provided absolutely no proof for any of her claims and said that she didn't have any because she wanted her favorite YouTuber to trust her, which could be a completely valid argument, except the pictures that she posted were from a second phone, meaning there was no risk of me knowing. She was taking pictures of compliments from a second phone, but has no evidence of anything sexual, has no evidence of us planning to meet up and have sex, apparently from after these pictures were secretly taken, has no evidence of a singular inappropriate message from me or her, or even anything at all that isn't a story reply from Snapchat's story page of all your friends. What's more likely? She happens to have no evidence of anything she's claiming, even from things she claimed happened after she was taking pictures secretly using a second phone, or she doesn't have any evidence because it didn't happen. She factually deleted and hid messages. She factually lied about me deleting messages that I didn't. She called people doubting her jealous of her, was banned from streamers' chats before this for posting sexual things, and she lied about having specific pieces of evidence that she never provided because they don't exist. If she's willing to factually lie, cover up, and hide things, how can you trust anything else she says as being representative of the truth? Lastly, once again, Again, she said she was going to take legal action. She then tweeted a picture of the inside of a police station and also said she'll come back with more evidence to be patient, that it's a process, and that it could be days. And that's her last tweet. It's been almost a year and a half now. Obviously, nothing happened. I waited and waited. Then, I got impatient, so I asked my legal team to look more into it. They got all of her information, and after filing many requests, they couldn't find anything. So, annoyed and still impatient, I asked them to get more specific. And after a lot of digging, my legal team was able to track down exactly where this picture is from based on the colors of the walls, the cameras, and a plaque outside the door. Then had someone go to the police station and requested specific records from this specific police station, and checked every record they could criminal and civil. I didn't find anything um, under either one of those names. And there was no information at all. I was not even in their system. So you're not listed in my system at all. So if you want to believe everything she said, you have to believe either one of these two things. Either one, she lied. This photo is fake. She never filed anything. And if she's lying about that, why would she not be lying about literally everything else? Or two, the picture is real, and whatever story she told didn't even meet the minimum required standard of proof to file a single piece of paperwork that my legal team could find in over a year and a half. 
I also sent a photocopy of my driver's license identification to this specific police station, a copy of Amanda's information, and let them know I was happy to answer any questions. To which, again, nothing ever happened. Not a single question, there was not a single case, accusation, or anything substantial enough to even have me in any system. And inevitably, when after this video, she makes another thread or another post, reiterating the same lies that she has already said, or promising even more things that she never follows through on, go to the police, or sue me. The standard of proof for you suing me is only proving that it's more likely than not that you're telling the truth. 51%, come take my money, but she won't. Because if she does, they're not gonna treat it like it's Twitter. She's gonna have to address all the lies. She's gonna have to address all the inconsistencies. She's gonna have to address her weird comments, her false promises, her character, and most importantly, be held accountable in her real life for what she's saying. This isn't online drama. This is real life stuff. There are real victims that have been manipulated, abused, and taken advantage of. Amanda, you are hurting actual victims. You are diminishing the very real trauma that victims of grooming and abuse have gone through. You are making it harder for real victims of abuse to come forward. You are not a victim. You are not doing a good thing. No matter how terrible you think I am or that the ends justify the means, you are hurting victims. Just in case this video isn't enough for you to realize that, check your mailbox. And that's all I have to say about these allegations. Now, before continuing with other stuff, I wanna talk a little bit about what happened after these allegations. After these allegations and after my face reveal, I'll be honest, I lost a lot of motivation. I distanced myself from Minecraft and I even thought about quitting and retiring. Of course, it was pretty scary and I just wanted to be able to upload Minecraft videos and have fun with my friends without worrying about people trying to ruin my life or attack my family or make up lies about me. And after all the swatting and doxing and fake allegations, it really just felt not worth it anymore. But also I had basically been stuck inside for the majority of the last four years. So I just thought I'd step back for a little bit. I traveled with my friends I met a lot of creators for the first time, I worked on music, had my tour, and really just stepped back from my online life. And I feel like during this time, I really disappointed a lot of my friends and their fans as a result. I didn't spend as much time on the finale of the Dream SMP as I should have. I wasn't good at communicating about anything, really, including important stuff for some people. I went very inactive on everything, and I pretty much isolated myself from most creators that weren't in my immediate circle. There was a looming cloud over me, and I felt bad talking to people because I didn't want to bring any negativity towards anyone. Later on, I got pretty insecure about my creator friendships that weren't people that I was super close with before YouTube. And even though everyone that I was friends with was very supportive and had my back and would reassure me privately, I still couldn't help but worry that because there were people online spreading hateful things about me, that it would impact their view of me personally. At one point, I ended up making a massive mess by tweeting publicly about a problem that I had with Quackity because he wasn't replying to me for a while. We had both made translation mods and people were claiming that we were copying each other. It it was just a mess. I was 100% wrong with taking anything public. Anything that can be handled in private should be handled in private, and I've always had that belief. So the way that I handled it was totally screwed up even by my own standards. It was completely driven by fear and insecurity over my friendships, and it was not something that Quackity deserved at all. If Quackity didn't want to reply to me about it or wanted to ignore it, that was entirely within his right to do, especially given the awkward circumstances of everything. I'm extremely proud of everything Quackity has done with his project, the QSMP, and genuinely he did it way better than I ever could have. It's incredible and everyone really should go check it out. I should have focused completely on the good that came from it all and not let myself get stuck on trying to work something out as friends when he seemed perfectly fine working on his own thing with his own community. Again, there's a lot of things that can explain my mindset, but at the end of the day, I'm sorry to Quackity and his community for creating unnecessary drama, and I hope that people can try and understand my mindset, where I was coming from, and that even if it doesn't seem like it, it's all from a place of love and care for my friends and the community. It was just an emotional time and I made a mistake. After that, obviously even more time passed and again, there was nothing new with the allegation. There was no updates. I talked to a lot of people for updated advice, lawyers, PR people, people with experience, and everyone told me that it's in my best interest to stay quiet. As time went on, I disagreed more and more and decided that I was gonna respond against their advice. So during a live stream, I mentioned that I was gonna respond soon and talked about the allegation a little bit. And of course, after this, Clips of what I said were taken out of context, people were spreading far and wide that I admitted to grooming, and a lot of other really impactful lies. And, of course, because of this, a lot of people on Twitter took it as an opportunity to joke about me being a pedophile, and one of those people was named Nicholas Cantu. If you don't know who that is, he's the voice actor for Gumball, Diego from Dora, and one of the turtles in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I had a terrible experience in real life with this person, so I replied to him talking about it and defending myself, and this situation blew up. I don't think I've ever gotten more hate in my life. September 23rd, I went to a friend of mine's birthday party in Austin, Texas. When I showed up, Nicholas Cantu was there, he was already drunk, and was drinking. He was being very aggressive to me throughout the night. I didn't know him, this was my first time ever meeting him, and we were not friends. Eventually, while on FaceTime to show his friends, he hit me out of nowhere. Again, this was my first time ever meeting him. I was there for another hour or so, and then when leaving the party, everyone decided to Uber together because it was late and there wasn't many of us there. Nicholas ended up in the front seat of the Uber that I was in, despite my apprehension. I thought, what's the worst that could happen? It's an Uber ride. 
and there's other people there, so I wasn't worried. Little did I know, he ended up dropping his phone out of the Uber window in the middle of the highway, and after he got out to look for it, the police showed up and stopped him from looking because it was dangerous and dark. Eventually, the Uber driver convinced Nicholas to leave. Well, I wanted to promise you that I'm sober, so if you guys want to conduct a sobriety test. Hey, look, hey, we're, we, we're, we're about to head out. And after we left, the Uber driver was trying to give advice to Nicholas on the police, telling him that he could have been arrested, and Nicholas did not like what he had to say. You're retarded. You're fing down syndrome. I don't give a f uh, how far did you go on your education? Who cares? Of course, I started to get involved and argue with Nick, defending the Uber driver, and Nick did not like that at all. Either you're gonna be paralyzed or you're gonna be dead. Like, I'm serious. Okay, man. And he was saying this, of course, after he had already assaulted me. While this was all happening, one of the other two people in the car with me that I also just met that night was recording him. He was aware of this, and he was actually the one that asked to be recorded. Thanks for recording, by the way. How long is it? But yeah, this YouTube video is gonna be nuts. Subscribe to the Kanji Network. Tune your sets right there. The next day, Nicholas sent me a very nice DM saying that he was sorry for hitting me, that he was having a really rough night, and that he was high and drunk, and said that he was sorry for spreading false allegations that he knew nothing about, saying that he recognized it could ruin people's lives. He complimented me, called me humble, grounded, and a good human. I didn't accept this apology, but I, I moved on, and honestly, I felt kind of bad for him. I recognized that he was once a child actor, and I feel like there's a lot of bad stuff in that industry, so I felt a little bit of sympathy. I hoped he would just learn from the mistakes he made that night and move on. But then, of course, Nicholas started tweeting, spreading the same lies about me that he had already apologized for spreading and recognized could ruin people's lives. He was also wishing death upon me publicly in Twitter replies, and that's when I realized it wasn't just one bad night and people needed to know about this. After I shared my experiences with him, he denied everything. He DM'd me saying I was lying, saying that if there wasn't video proof, it's all lies. He tweeted denying it all, which he deleted, and then he tweeted lying more about the situation, but also admitting to some stuff while underplaying it. He blatantly lied about the fact that he tipped the Uber driver when he didn't. He blatantly lied about me sending unsolicited dick pics to people. He also deleted that tweet almost immediately after. He blatantly lied about the reason he hit me and claimed I called the girl a whore and got slapped for it, which again was later recanted, but not after millions of people had already seen those lies. Nicholas tried DMing one of the people that was in the Uber that night with us to try and get them on his side as a witness. That caused the person who I didn't know at all to message me and tell me that they had videos of him being horrible from that night and that they don't like that he's pretending to be innocent. I asked them if they'd be willing to send me the video so I could back up my story since he was denying it and lying, and they told me that he was threatening them to make sure they didn't give me the videos. After I ended up finally getting the videos, I posted them. I needed to defend myself against the lies that he was telling and wanted to share the proof. I also posted screenshots of text between me and the Uber driver, confirming that he had blatantly lied and didn't even tip the Uber driver. After I posted this, Nicholas went silent, deleted his tweets, and hasn't said anything publicly since. People still think that I lied and faked the Uber driver's text, or many other lies that were falsely spread by Nicholas or other people online. So I got in contact with the Uber driver from that night, I interviewed him, and I'll let him speak for himself to help clear some things up. Hey, what's the worst that can happen? It's an Uber drive. And oh. Yeah, yeah, what's the, yeah, let me tell you, what's the worst that can what's happen? What's the worst that can happen? It happened. Either you're gonna be paralyzed or you're gonna be dead. Like, I'm serious. What's going on, man? This is our Uber driver, who happens to be one of the highest rated Uber drivers in all of Texas. He agreed to come share his recollection of what happened, so I'm just gonna let him talk. When I picked you guys up, you know, he had a lot of energy. It was wild, like putting his head outside filming. The phone dropped out of the car. When the cop showed up, the cop came up to the car at first and was talking to him. And the way that he was speaking to the cop, he was speaking like down on the cop. And I'm like, man, like you need to be quiet because you're gonna go to jail if you keep talking to the cops like that. As soon as I said that, not even 20 seconds, the cop came and he was like, you get out the car, you're going to jail. I'm trying to save you from going to jail because I don't want nobody to go to jail, period. He kept saying something about like IQ, like he felt like he was better. And I was like, nobody cares about your IQ. There's a lot of people with high IQs in jail right now. So what are you gonna tell him? You're gonna talk to him and say that you're a child star while you're in jail? So I was like, I'm trying to help you out. I don't want you to go to jail even after you're acting crazy and wild, which most Uber drivers would have left you. You never said anything negative towards him while he was saying all this stuff. The majority of the stuff didn't make it on the tape. I think he's he was going through a lot of other things besides just being drunk. And the thing is, it, it doesn't really matter what he was on, what he was going through, the way he was acting, it was unacceptable. 50 or 60%, I may be wrong about the number, but something like that of all, violence has alcohol in it so if that was the case all these people would be getting away with it like y'all kept saying i'm sorry like we just met him you're gonna be forgotten like the dust in the sand when you're in the sahara and there's hundred million thousand billion sand particles you're gonna be one of those and i'm gonna be a statue erected in gold yeah yeah he went he went all into the uh, egyptian king and the <laughs> like he's real creative yeah did he did he ever did he ever tip you anything no no that was another lie well i don't know why he said that 
And you know what? At the end of the day, it doesn't even matter about the tip or anything like that. Don't say it if you're not going to do it. And don't say it at all. I wasn't begging you guys, you guys for a tip or anything like that. Man, it was an eventful night. I don't know why a lot of people think that you were the one that was doing all these things and making all this stuff up and you wanted to do all this. I was like, he was the one that was trying to stop everything the most. I posted like literally just like two screen caps of text from you and um, everybody was saying they were fake. It was one of the messages where you said like, there needs to be more people like you in the world or something. And, I, and they're like, when would somebody ever say that? Because they didn't experience you in that manner, right? Yeah. Those are my real words. And I did feel that way. So I'm letting you guys know right now, all those text messages, that was me saying it, Dream did make the situation better. Everybody coming at Dream, that's not how it went down. It was nothing like that. And now you're telling me how you got hit and it showed me who you are. The first impression of somebody is a lasting impression. And you were nothing but respectful since you got in the vehicle. And you tried to de-escalate everything that was going on. And all the people in the back, Nicholas, if you are listening, really do some deep diving in yourself and figure out what the real issue was. Do a lot of soul searching because you are intelligent because I could tell some of your comebacks and what were you saying, but the way you were acting was more of a cry for help. Whatever you're going through, you got to fight and you got to get some help. Don't fight other people fight what you're going through. At the end of the day, I know we all make bad decisions and we have to learn the lesson from it. And this was just a bad decision that you made and just learn from it. And all the different YouTubers and all the different people that were commenting about the situation, I do understand the entertainment part of it, right? And it's just a lot of, seen a lot of memes and everything, but I was reading a lot of comments. He was saying this, or he was saying that, or it doesn't make sense. All that stuff doesn't mean anything if you were not there, it's just speculation. And if somebody older is trying to help you guys out, my advice is for you guys to listen. That's, that's it. That's all you have to do. But you don't have to be negative towards them. And we have to stick together because there's so many things that keep us apart, right? Just like if you look at it, it's the, the dream and the voice for, for a gumball. How about you and Nicholas have a sit down with me? We talk all the issues and all the problems out and we can show people how bringing things together from a negative to a positive and that was and see how that spreads it's in the universe amazing man well thank you so much i really appreciate you coming on i posted a longer version of this interview on my second channel if you'd like more context we talked for a long time now before i show you the most insane hair loss inducing they I have ever seen on Twitter that took place after I posted this video of him, I need to reiterate a couple facts. One, I just met Nicholas. He was already drunk when I met him. Two, the party was not my party. I did not provide alcohol to anyone. Three, I did not know how old Nicholas was. And here's a video of what Nicholas said after I found out his age and critiqued him for drinking in front of the cops. Why are you a narc pedophile? Four, I was not the one recording and I only posted the video because he was lying and saying unless there's video proof, it didn't happen. So yeah, now that that's clarified, enjoy. As you can see, it got insane. Tweets doxing me and my friends and family got tens of thousands of likes. I have never seen that in my life. So I just want to talk very briefly about how serious doxing and swatting can be. It's a common thing for people to say that I don't think doxing is serious. In a clip that got a lot of attention from a stream of mine a while ago, I said that if you have seven followers on Twitter, you shouldn't stress over being doxed. I don't stand by that, and I didn't mean to minimize doxing at all. I had just said before that, that if you dox people, you are not a part of my community, that I don't support you, and that it's disgusting. It can happen to 
to anyone and it can be serious to anyone. I was just trying to make the point that it's less likely to happen to somebody that's smaller because people have less reasons to target them and that if they were targeted, they had less reason to actually follow through on anything. But it's just not something that I should have said or something I should have explained as it made it seem like I was supporting doxing when I just wasn't at all. I have always said that doxing is extremely serious. Wadding is extremely serious. And I don't think people even realize how serious. It's not just haha funny send a pizza to someone's house. It's attempted identity theft for my family members and friends, credit cards being signed up for in people's names, fans or people who dislike you showing up at your house or your family's house to try and break in, trackers being put on your family members' cars, people showing up at your little sister's job, SWAT teams being called to you in your family members' houses, bomb threats and the FBI having to make sure you're okay, people calling your 80-year-old grandma pretending to be you and terrorizing her. That's all stuff that has happened to me, my family, and my friends. They're not hypotheticals. This isn't just that you don't like Dream. It's not just me whose life you're putting at risk and who you're harassing. You're going after an 80-year-old woman who has done nothing to you. It's not just me you're hurting when you make up lies or spread horrible things. It's the 50 employees I have who also have families and lives. It's all of my friends and anyone that's ever been associated with me. It's my family, my grandparents, and most importantly, actual victims who have gone through traumatic things. And that's not even talking about the stuff that hasn't happened to me, but has happened to other people. People. Pets and people being shot by police officers during swattings. People breaking in with a gun to kill a YouTuber they don't like. It's incredibly serious and it's not okay. That wasn't even the end of the craziness though. That was the beginning. Because then, during the midst of all the Nicholas drama, someone tweeted out this. Accusing me of sexting a 16 slash 17 year old girl named Jamie. Because I was currently the internet punching bag, and it was proof that the punching was justifiable, it was spread very quickly, without a lot of questions being asked. Before I break it down, I want to immediately say that this is not true. I did not groom anyone, I did not groom Jamie, and I would never be inappropriate with someone underaged. When they posted this allegation, attached was a video that, of course, went viral. It was a video from another phone of a Snapchat being opened, supposedly from Dream, that had moaning in the background and a very sexual caption. This is the clip in its entirety, without audio. They also attached screenshots of Discord DMs between anonymous people, who were claimed to be two friends of Dreams, and said it was them discussing me having sex at a minor. In these screenshots, they say that I was confronted about it and that I admitted it. I've shown you every piece of evidence they posted, without changes, and I've mentioned everything that they've claimed. Now, just to reiterate, this is not true. Every piece of evidence is either out of context, edited, blatantly lied about, or presented in a very disingenuous way. Again, I did not groom anyone. I also was never confronted about grooming by any of my friends. Now, of course, when something like this is claimed, it's extremely serious. So I'm gonna break it down in detail. Okay, so who is this accusation from? It's from an anonymous burner account made the day of the accusation, which is interesting. So we don't know who they are, but we do know who the victim is. Jamie, right? And how old did they say she was? They said 16 slash 17. Okay, so what else do we know about Jamie? They said she left the internet in 2020. So because they apparently can't, let me tell you who Jamie is. I follow Jamie on Twitter, which people quickly pointed to as proof. As you can see, Jamie is also followed by Skeppy, Verb, and Spifey, other YouTubers from the community. I met Jamie when I wasn't even a YouTuber. I had just posted my first ever YouTube video less than a month before. I had less than 100 followers on Twitter the month that I met her. I made a lot of friends around this time because I wasn't a big creator and I was part of a lot of online communities as a fan. She played on Bad Boy Halo's Minecraft server and was a fan of Skeppy. I was trying to grow and make connections and I had pretty much just made my Twitter account, so I made a lot of friends. Many people from this time I'm still friends with to this day. People claiming that me following her is proof that I sexed underaged fans or groomed her at all is ridiculous. These claims are completely false. They were right about her age. She's 21 now, so she would have been around 17 four years ago. That's about the only correct thing they said this entire time. Like, remember they said she quit the internet in 2020 as a convenient way to excuse any questions about her? Well, she didn't. She liked a tweet from last month actively tweeted all of 2022, and she changed her bio and Twitter account name when this happened, just wanting to be left alone? That's interesting. And she actually tweeted saying she only privated her account because some of her IRL friends were finding it and she didn't want them to. I wonder why they lied about that. Maybe because the person who's claiming this doesn't know Jamie, doesn't know anything about Jamie, doesn't know me, doesn't know anything about me, and is being malicious and making up whatever they can to end my career. Let's talk about some other stuff. They also said they posted the videos 
with permission, which of course makes the videos seem much more real. Well, it's apparently me and I didn't give them permission and it's apparently sent to Jamie and she didn't give them permission. She quit the internet. She couldn't have. They even critiqued Moist Critical for his video, saying how terrible it was, claiming that I admitted that the Snapchats were real, which I never did. In their original tweet, they notably say when she had her age in her bio, which seems oddly specific, just to remove the few people that would say, well, what if he didn't know her age? When even in their own proof, which is random Discord messages with no context or who the messages even are. In another part of their screenshot, anonymous person number two says this, but for some reason that's cropped out of their tweets because they don't even know what the screenshots they're using as evidence say. They don't care about the truth. They're just making things up as they go. And because it's a claim against me, people will just believe it. They can say, Jamie left the internet. No proof, but I guess she did. They say they got permission to post these videos. I guess they did. They post a video of Snapchats say it's mine. They never show the Snapchat profile or any proof that it's my Snapchat, but I guess you can't change your Snapchat name for free to anything at any time as many times as you want. So it must be Dream. No more evidence needed. They're telling the truth. Even with what little context and evidence they have, they have to crop things and lie to try and hide the fact that they know nothing. But the burner seemed so confident. They couldn't be being malicious. They even put in their bio that if Dream reached out, they would personally give him their information so that he could sue them because everything they were saying was 100% true. Oh, what? They, that's not in their bio anymore. I, that's, that's weird. I wonder why they removed that. They did reveal who they got the original screenshots from. So let's see what that person has to say and why the burner was so confident in their claims. Quote, I don't know Jamie. I've never known her. I've never had a private or a public interaction with her at all, unquote. Wow, seems like they have a whole lot of information. So I reached out to them to try and find anything that I could find to find out what this was even about, because I've never been confronted by one of my friends for grooming, and I've never groomed anybody. So I found out who was anonymous in these messages, and let's hear what they have to say. These screenshots are extremely out of context and used disingenuously to tell a story about Dream that isn't true at all. I haven't spoken to Dream in a very long time, but to my knowledge, he has not interacted with underage fans inappropriately or in any way that could be considered grooming. These DMs were posted by the burner without my permission and without ever contacting me beforehand. They were sent to the burner by a vulnerable person that was upset and being taken advantage of while under the influence of alcohol. I want to be anonymous and stay completely out of this because all the terrible stuff I've seen happen to everyone mentioned on both sides is very scary. This conversation was private in my life and no one deserves to have their personal life dug through because of anonymous people making false claims without knowledge or context about anything they're saying. This person was not involved at all and did not consent to anything. Now, if you're a little confused, I am too. This is a burner account making up things. Their story makes no sense. Okay, so let's just summarize this. This allegation is not from a victim. It is from an anonymous Twitter account that was made the same day as the allegation. This anonymous person claims that I groomed a girl named Jamie. They did not ever contact Jamie. They did not know Jamie. They got none of their information from Jamie. They even incorrectly said that she quit the internet years ago when she's still active to this day. They posted videos claiming to be from me to a minor. They never showed proof that it was from me or my Snapchat profile. They never showed proof of who it was to. They cropped context from screenshots, lied publicly and said I admitted the videos were from me. They falsely alluded to the fact that the victim gave them permission and ended up causing massive harassment and terror to Jamie, who they said was a victim of mine. The person in the screenshots claims that I'm not a groomer, that they're extremely out of context and that the burner doesn't even know what was being discussed and that now their personal life is being dug into due to an anonymous burner account. On top of that, no one even taps to open the Snapchat. There's no finger, you can't open snaps with a button, but it doesn't even matter because you can see that no buttons were pressed. So how did it open? Nobody touches the screen. You can't open a Snapchat without tapping the button to open it. So ignoring the fact that there's no proof it's even me, how is this video even real? How did it open? The video doesn't even make sense. People have also pointed out that frames are missing and that the normal Snapchat animation doesn't play at all. But despite all of that, hardly anyone asked any questions. If you replied asking any questions, you got called a groomer supporter. Despite the fact that the proof was a video of a video of a video from screenshots of DMs of screenshots of DMs, you have to go four people deep to find anyone that has ever talked to Jamie. I'm not even in any of these screenshots. And the video of the video of the video has like 10 frames where you see the name Dream. Most people spreading this did zero research. But wait, they reported me. They even reached out to the Orange County Police, my local police, to put it in writing, put their name on it, and solidify that their claims are correct. Thank you for calling the Orange County Sheriff's Office. To continue in English, press 1. To continue in Spanish, 
<laughs> my name is I, I have a YouTube channel and I live stream and, and stuff and um, long story short very recently someone anonymously posted a bunch of like fake stuff online saying that I'm a child um, and of course it's from like a burner like anonymous burner account can't really you know whatever um but anyway mm -hmm. in their post they called they, they said that they called and talked to the orange county um, sheriff's office about it and of course they said that to try and like make me look guilty for being like a predator somehow but i guess i, I wanted to call and try and see get more information i guess what's your name people are there yeah, they're slandering you there's nothing, and this is the, the, we have a very broad database. Nothing, no interaction. I did last name, first name, first name, last name, nothing. Zero, nada. So no, there's, there's nothing. No, no, like, no reports allegations, been made. reports, anything? Nothing. Your name has nothing next to it. There's not even, so right. you would like to make a report and you feel like someone is um, harassing you? All, All right. right. But whoever's telling you that stuff, you may need to file a complaint because that's harassment. And that's called slander, and you do have civil rights, so you can make a report if you want. Okay. All right. Thank you so All much. All right. Merry Christmas. All right. Merry Christmas. But And not that taking legal action as an anonymous source would prove anything, but just to be clear, I have searched far and wide, sent open access requests to police departments. So you're not listed in my system at all and all police records are public in florida where i live not a single person has filed anything against me anything even though every claimant has claimed that they have again not that it would prove anything if they did it would be disproved in court but not a single person did i also don't have any civil cases brought against me meaning no one has officially accused me of anything from anywhere despite again every single person claiming they have this is public record but despite everything you've just heard before this in this video, when this tweet dropped, people were celebrating in the replies. Celebrating in the replies of a tweet that's supposed to be about a child being sexually abused. That is not okay. And just shows that you actually don't care about victims, about this. You just care about taking down Dream, which is the same thing the Burner account cares about. They don't care about the truth. They don't care about what's real. They care about saying whatever they can to ruin my career. They don't care about victims. They don't care about Jamie. And if you still don't believe me, let's hear a statement from Jamie herself, who seemed terrified, didn't want anything affecting her real life, wasn't a victim before, but is now due to all the harassment and people spreading sexual things about her without her knowledge or consent. My name is Jamie. I wanna make it very clear that I was never groomed. I definitely am not a victim of dream. I don't know how or why people are using my name and information without having ever asked me if any of it's true. Everything claiming to be about me was posted without my consent. Leave me alone. I want nothing to do with this. I have been getting harassed by people, either saying I'm looking for attention or digging through my life trying to confirm things I want nothing to do with. Leave me alone. Jamie's Twitter account got locked for suspicious activity after she was blocking all of her friends so none of them would see the things being said online about her. She didn't quit the internet in 2020 like the burner claimed, but she probably will now. She had to change all of her social media ads and people were messaging friends of hers, all because an anonymous person made a claim on her behalf without even knowing if it's true. Spreading sexual stories about her as a minor to millions of people, creating victims in the process. Hope it was worth it. So I'm sorry, Jamie. I'm sorry that you were used as bait. I'm sorry that you have your life being dug through by people. And I'm sorry to all victims that have to see this, that have more fear about coming forward, because all this is terrible and no one wins. And I'm sorry to anyone else that got involved or dragged into it. I'm sorry for those that were taken advantage of. I'm sorry for those that were lied to. Again, no one wins. It's incredibly hard to navigate these situations. There's no benefit to somebody putting their name and face out there to defend me or clear up complete lies if even when someone's completely in the wrong, they're still praised as a hero because it's against Dream. As I was literally about to post this video, another burner thread by a different burner was made about Jamie, claiming 24 pages of evidence that I groomed her. And the very first line of their document, the Twitter account Burner22 recently provided a screenshot of a Twitter DM conversation between them and someone by the name of Jamie. This is massively incorrect, a lie, and never happened, as you now know. The burner account was not any of the people in any of the messages, never spoke with Jamie, and the actual person in these messages has made a statement in this video debunking this, as well as Jamie. And this is the first line of their 24 pages. Their proof was all to show that I knew Jamie, followed Jamie, and that Jamie was a minor. All things that they didn't need to stalk her to do. Maybe let victims speak instead of digging into their lives. Their 
Proof digs so much further into Jamie's life, including by stalking four-year-old Twitter accounts of hers using the Wayback Machine, so that even content that she deleted and content from her private accounts are now being stalked. Leave her alone. This tweet has 40,000 likes in 10 hours as of me making this. This is ridiculous. Anyways, I tweeted when I first saw this claim pointing a finger at someone that I thought was behind the burner account. I was messaged by multiple friends with proof linking them to the account. They were the only non-anonymous name on any of the screenshots, have a massive dislike for me, and were actively replying to the allegation. So my obvious assumption was that they are behind the account. This person used to be a friend of mine many years ago, and we are no longer friends for unrelated reasons. They claimed sense that their only involvement was that when they were drunk and having a manic episode, that they sent some screenshots of stuff into a group chat with people that were asking them questions. They claimed that they have no other involvement. They said they don't know where the videos are from, that videos were never sent to her, and that the screenshots in her DMs were pictures and not actually videos. She claims that she did not send the screenshots, claiming that I groomed anybody, and that she had nothing to do with them being posted by the anonymous burner account. Now, if this is true, which I can assume it is, it's just another horrible thing the burner account did, taking advantage of a drunk person who is not having a good time and using their past with me to try and get dirt on me is just ridiculous. Now, I don't know who's behind the burner account because it's an anonymous account. And unfortunately, they removed the thing from their bio that said they'd tell me who they are so I could sue them. But regardless, my original tweets were worded poorly and people read into them, including her, and thought that I was claiming that the videos were real but that I sent them to her. The screen recordings in my screenshot were from after the allegations were made, but I don't know how I would mean that. I only posted screenshots of her screen recording my chats to show that she was actively collecting information, but I see how if you don't know the dates, or really anything, then you could think that. In my tweet saying I was making a video about this, I called the audio essentially unsubstantiated revenge porn, with revenge porn in quotation marks, while of course denying that I groomed anyone. People again took that as me admitting that the audio was real, even though I literally say essentially, unsubstantiated, and put revenge porn in quotation marks. It is incredibly violating to have audio spread to the masses saying that it's you moaning, that people think is you moaning. Whether it is you moaning or not, it could be anyone moaning, it does not matter, it's still violating. This is sent to your little sister saying it's you moaning. It doesn't matter that it's not you moaning. It's being said seriously that it is. This is, in essence, revenge porn. This isn't even the only time I've had claimed sexual stuff spread about me. Once, people spread a video that was like deep faked or something of me sucking my own dick. It obviously wasn't me, but so many people thought it was, which even caused some YouTubers to make videos like this. You guys know I've never been the biggest fan of the YouTuber Dream, but I have always had respect for him as a person. That ends today. Dream sucked his own d You know, I thought this was some sort of joke, and then I saw the reply. Was a video of Dream sucking his erect penis. But of course, while this was all going on on Twitter, it just was okay to lie about me. And all the people posting fake screenshots and memes and taking things seriously from parody accounts just proves how easy it is to fake this stuff. So let's talk about fake allegations and how horrible they are. It's become a bit of a trend in the online space, or at least the gaming space, to fake grooming allegations. There have been fake allegations against Bad Boy Halo, which the person ended up tweeting and admitting they were fake and saying that they're just kids that made a mistake after he legally threatened them. There have been fake allegations made against Sapnap that again, they admitted were fake after I replied this time and called out something that was wrong with their story. They continued to lie and try and convince me though. There have been false allegations against Carl, Rambu, Wilbur, probably every Minecraft gaming creator you know, me saying any name doesn't even matter. Not everyone gets traction and not everyone has as much effort put into it, but there have been hundreds. There were a few notable ones against me during the last month. One was disproved because it was proved that the video was edited based on a frame hop. Another was disproved because of a photo in the background was from Tumblr. But there was one thing similar between all of them. They all showed fake evidence. They all showed fake edited Snapchats. They all showed fake edited pictures or videos. And that is scary. But sometimes they didn't even need evidence. Someone tweeted out that I wasn't working on my video, that I was actually out meeting a fan I met when they were 16 at a bar, and that I got stood up and laughed at by everyone. And this just didn't even happen. But you don't even need any proof. It was Thanksgiving and I was charging my car by my grandparents' house. And I went to a non-alcoholic bar and played ping pong and was never stood up by anybody. They can just make up whatever they want and rudely take secret pictures of me and people will believe it. This is crazy stalker behavior. They even said that I was the most ass ping pong player in the place. When I was undefeated, they even had to lie and slander my ping pong record. And then of course, parody accounts are tweeting images like this one, faking me DMing them and threatening them legally or lots of other stuff. And again, this just shows how easy it is to fake stuff, especially when you're a burner account that has no accountability. One of the people that made the fake allegations even tweeted that I can't sue them, that they're anonymous and on a VPN. After they were caught, people will take a claim with almost no evidence and run with it 
and ruin people's lives, hundreds of jobs, families, not even just when it's me. It may only be a trend in the Minecraft space right now, but it won't be that way for long. Okay, XQC, I know you're probably watching this. I want you to address this. What do you have to say for yourself? It's irrefutable proof. Look, here it is on a second phone. Prove to me you didn't send me this video. Or, you're a pervert. Forever. And everyone watching this will now know it. Or Pokimane, you've been getting some hate for your cookie prices recently. And I don't mean to expose you, but you did say this to me. And I think that's disgusting. What do you have to say for yourself? What more proof do you need? I also have the cookies she sent me, and a signed note from her. This is irrefutable evidence. You get the point. I made all of those pieces of evidence in 10 minutes, with only free programs. What's stopping anyone from going and making a fresh account, faking evidence, and then accusing a person they hate of something vile? Be careful what you believe, and ask questions. Believing real victims is important, but not believing fake victims is very important to real victims too. As for my conclusion on this video, I have a couple things to say. First of all, I, I just want to recognize that I'm probably in this position because of myself. The people that made these claims undoubtedly had unhealthy parasocial relationships with me, and that's why it's gotten to this point. I want to and will do anything I can to denounce this. My view on fans has shifted slowly over time, jumping massively when I face revealed and actually got to meet fans in person, which made things much more real and massively changed my perspective. I think it's incredibly unhealthy to be obsessive with someone, and I also think that it's clear to anyone that's stepping back and looking at these situations that people obsessively hate me and are making up lies about me, which is also because of parasocialness. Parasocial love turned to parasocial hate, and I have no doubt that the anonymous people making these fake allegations were once big fans of mine. I grew up being a massive fan of football, and I had jerseys of my favorite players and was very passionate, so I've always related to stands in that way. Way, but my passion never turned to obsession, and I never truly realized how serious it can get, even sometimes when people were literally telling me. <laughs> I think that part of why I'm in the position that I'm in right now is because I started pulling away from my fans after my face reveal. Meeting fans in person made things much more real, and I wasn't so chronically online anymore because I actually had real life and things to do. I think that the fact that I'm a very relaxed person overall that has relaxed boundaries has encouraged that type of behavior too, so I'm just going to re-clarify some of my boundaries. One, I don't support any sexually explicit art of me or my friends. It never bothered me personally that much because I don't really care about anything, but it is just weird, especially if you're a minor and drawing anything like that. That's gross. I don't support anything inappropriate for minors at all. Art, TikToks, comments, anything. It's gross. Two, serious shipping is bad. I think that prying into people's private relationships, being deeply speculative or anything like that is terrible. I don't mind jokes. I don't mind doing it for fun, but anything serious really crosses the line. Again, I've always found it funny being shipped with George because we're not dating and we're friends, but if you genuinely think that we are dating and it's part of your personality, or you obsess over it, you need to get off the internet. That is not healthy. I'm sure I'll make more clarifications in the future, but I just don't want anything weird. Don't obsess over me or my friends. I deleted a video called Stands on my second channel that I made a while ago that I don't necessarily view the same way now. That doesn't mean that I don't appreciate you as a fan, but again, just be normal. Be the passionate fan, not the stalker obsessive fan. I've already had people with access to all of my accounts for a long time, but I will be slightly changing how I use my accounts now. At the end of the day, I do just want to make Minecraft content and have fun with my friends. That's it. That's all. Because of that, I've been a bit of a detriment to myself by arguing on Twitter or getting into petty drama that I don't need to. So because of that, I'm just not going to be using Twitter anymore. I'm going to have someone run my Twitter and post tweets promoting my content. I'll still tweet non-promotional stuff, just with it being positive only and going through multiple people. And I don't want anyone that's a fan of mine to take anything super negative away from this video or think about things in a really sad way. I want to be positive, and that's one of my favorite things about having a community at all, spreading positivity and love. So... Try and be positive. Say something nice today. Do something nice today. I don't want to keep letting this cloud loom over my head though, so I'm just going to move on. I don't plan on making any more statements, and I don't plan on talking about this anymore. This is it. I just want to focus on making the best content that I can, so that's what I'm going to do. I have tons of Minecraft content that I've been working on, and I'm super excited to put it out there. Pretty crazy. And I've been working on some stuff for over a year now. I don't want to throw the excitement away, and again, this was by far the biggest reason for my inactivity, so Minecraft Dream will be coming back full force, stepping away from Twitter, and just focusing on putting out awesome Minecraft videos like I used to do. So yeah, I appreciate everyone that watched this video all the way through. I'm sure it was a roller coaster. There's tons of links and information as well in the description. I also posted multiple videos on my second channel. See you guys soon.